Hey guys, so this is going to be area of a triangle and we're going to kind of discuss all situations of triangles and how to find their area. So if you're given a right triangle, um, we're going to talk about Heron's formula. If you have two angles of a side of a triangle, if you have two sides and an angle of a triangle, and you can see kind of all the formulas floating around here that we're going to use. Basically, after we're done with this video, you should be able to get any triangle given to you, whether it's a right triangle or not right triangle, and be able to calculate its area. So let's see how to do that. So our base example here is right triangles. So our right triangle formula is one half base times height, where the base, you know, is this section here. This section here is the base. The height is, you know, also known as the altitude this guy here. So kind of, you can think like, okay, how long is my triangle and how high is my triangle? Um, and then it's one half base times height, one half, that's what the B is, what the H is, one half base times height. Now in a perfect world, we would have a right triangle, right? And if we have a right triangle, then this is the height. And let's say the height is five. Here's the base here. Let's see that's eight. Um, and you would have these given to you. Now, if you have a right triangle and you know some angles, you could do some Sokotoa magic um, to figure out the height, to figure out the base, um, if you were given such information. So if you have a right triangle, there are ways to get this information. Again, use your Sokotoa magic. Um, but once you have it, it would just be one half times the base times the height. So this is gonna be the area. And the area in this case would equal five times eight is 40, half of that is 20. And then depending on the units. So this is the base case. And this is kind of like, um, I don't wanna say the easiest, but maybe like the simplest case of triangles. So if you are lucky enough to get a right triangle with the base given to you and the height given to you, one half base times height will give you your area. Now let's suppose we don't have like the best case scenario. We don't have a right triangle. We're not given this information. So let's suppose instead we're given a non-right triangle. So first of all, all triangles do have a height. So if you can get fancy enough and figure out this height in your triangle and figure out the base in your triangle, you can always use the one half base times height. Um, but it's not always super easy to get this height here. There's some work that goes into it um, to figure it out. And again, Sokotoa you could use, um, law of sines you could use, law of cosines you can use to get this H. And then, of course, you could run it through one half base times height. Or we have some alternate formulas for you as well. So if you know two angles and a side, also known as angle, angle, side, um, any one of these formulas will work. It just depends on what angles and what sides you have. So let's see, in our example, we have angle A, big A, 42.5. We have big angle B, which is 71.4, and we know little a, which is 210, right? Angle, angle, side. Now, all of my formulas here use angles B, C, and A, A, B, and C. I need to know all angles of my triangle. Well, if I know two angles, I can find the third one, right? 180 minus 42.5 minus 71.4. I get that my third angle here is gonna be 66.1. Now I have everything I need. Now the question is, okay, well, which one of these am I gonna use? Well, it depends on what side you have. Well, I have the side of little a, so I'm gonna use the formula that uses the side of little a. So again, this is if you have angle, angle, side given to you in a non-right triangle. Uh, and so big S, which a lot of the time denotes area for some reason unbeknownst to me, makes more sense to be big A, but we already have a big A here. It's our angle A. So big S, A squared, A is 210, 210 squared, sine B, sine B, and B is 71.4, sine of C, C is 66.1. All of this is over 2 times sine of A. Sine of A is 42.5. All right, let's slam all of this into our calculator. Just make sure to put parentheses around your numerator, parentheses around your denominator, and you can throw this all into your calculator at the same time. 
So 210 squared times sine of 71.4 times sine of 66.1 divided by parentheses around the denominator 2 times sine of 42.5 close parentheses around the denominator and we get 28 280 and are we doing all whole numbers no one significant decimal so we'll go one significant decimal oh it's a 0.97 so actually this is going to go up to 81 and this is in inches and because it's area it would be inches squared and so now we kind of step back and be like well does this make sense because this is really large well one of my side lengths is 210 inches, right? And this side length, little a, is also my smallest side length. And I can tell this because it's across my smallest angle, which means side C and side B are even bigger than this. So this is a large triangle. So this does kind of make sense, okay? Now, if I got an area that was like 28 square inches and one of my sides is 210 inches, I need to step back and figure out, does this make sense? In this case, yes, it does. Okay, this is probably a reasonable answer. And this is where you can be like, okay, I probably did that correctly. Okay. So again, these are the formulas to use if you are given angle angle side in a non right triangle. Let's see another situation. What if we're given side side angle or the SSA case? Then we have these three formulas that we can use. So in our example, we're given little a, which is 41, side. We're given c, which is 34, side. And we're given big B, which is 151.5. So two sides in the angle between them, excuse me, this is side angle side, excuse me, not SSA, this is SAS, -S. too many S's and too many A's. This is the SAS -S case. So if you have a side, if you have two sides and you know the angle between them, then any one of these formulas will help you out to find your area. Again, you could always find the height of your triangle by using Sokotoa. You could always find um, the other side of your triangle by using law of cosines. Depending what you're given, you could use some law of sines to find like the missing side or missing angles in your triangles. So if you don't like these formulas and you liked the other formulas, you can use your law of sines. You can use your Sokotoa. You can use your law of cosines. Remember to solve for all sides and angles in the missing triangle. And then if you know everything about your triangle, just use your favorite area formula at that point because they'll all become available to you. And we'll see this in Heron's formula here in the next example as well. Okay, so don't think you're stuck with any of these. Um, you know, you can find out more information about your triangle and then kind of use whatever formula you want at that point. Even the one half base times height if you're capable of solving for your height here. Okay, anyway, side angle side. Um, which formula shall we use? Well, I know little a and I know little c, so that's this formula up here because I have little a, right? I have little c and I have big B. That's what I have here, so I'll be using this top formula. So our area is equal to 1 half little a, which is 41, times little c, which is 34, times sine of b, which is 151. Point five. All this gets thrown into the calculator. And we have 1 half times 41 times 34 times sine of 151.5. And all this is going to come out to 332.5. What's our significant digits look like? Looks like we got one decimal. So 332.57. So that'll become a 0.6 when we round it. It looks like we're using meters, so meters is denoted as a little m, and since this is area, it's two-dimensional, this would be meters squared. So the area of this triangle, where we were given the side angle side of a non-right triangle, 
we use this formula here and we got that it is 332.6 meters squared. Okay, in the next example, we're going to see Heron's formula. And Heron's formula is a very useful formula and it's if you know every single side in your triangle, which is more common than you may think. Um, if you know all the sides in your triangle, Heron's formula will give you the area of said triangle and your triangle does not need to be a right triangle. Again, your triangle does not need to be a right triangle to use Heron's formula. So any triangle, which makes this widely applicable. Now, my personal favorite is to use Heron's formula um, because for me, it's much easier to remember than the other two formulas. And if your question is, well, what if you're in a situation where you don't know all the sides? Well, I use law of sines or I use law of cosines to find all my sides and then I use Heron's formula. So I know it's a little bit more work, but I'm also not really carrying around like a Rolodex of all of these formulas with me. Heron's formula is the easiest for me to remember and I know my law of sines and I know my law of cosines. So I always just solve out for every single side of the triangle and then hit it with Heron's formula to find the area. Now that's just my personal preference. Again, do whatever works for you. So Heron's formula said, if we know every side of our triangle, then big S or area is equal to the square root of little s times s minus a, s minus b, s minus c, where little s is the half perimeter. In other words, add up all the sides and divide by two. So little a in our example is 8.32. Little b is 6.23. And C is 3.45. Okay, I first need to find my little s, which is my half perimeter. This will also be denoted as semi-perimeter. Um, it means the same thing. So I add up all my sides, 3.45 plus 8.32. Throw this into my calculator. We got one half times 6.23 plus 3.45 plus 8.32, and that comes out very conveniently to just the number nine. <laughs> so I know my little s. Now let's use Heron's formula. Big S, which is area, is equal to little s, which is nine, times little s minus a, which is 8.32, times little s minus b. Oops, I wrote little s, nine. We know what little s is. Minus little b, which is 6.23 times little s, which you know is 9, minus c, which is 3.45. Now the reason why I like Heron's formula is because again, we can just shove all of this into our calculator. Square root, 9 times 9 minus 8.32 times 9 minus 6.23 times 9 minus 3.45 equals 9.699. How many digits are we using? Two significant digits past the decimal point. So this is going to be 9.699. That 9 will round it up to 0 0.70. And our units are feet. And this is area, so it's feet squared. So the area of this triangle is 9.70 feet squared. Again, using Heron's formula. And again, I'm going to reiterate, pick one of these formulas that you really like the best to find area in a non-right triangle, and then just use law of sines or law of cosines to get all that information that you need, and then just use your favorite formula. Um, it's not really practical to be going around and, and trying to memorize every single one of these because it's just a lot. So just pick one and just use it all the time. That's my suggestion, but again, do whatever you please. So my particular favorite is Heron's formula. I use Heron's formula all the time. And I rather just use the extra work, the law of cosines or the law of sines to find all of my sides and then plug it into Heron's formula and go for there because that's what works for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope at some point there was a formula out there that you picked out. So you're like, well, I really like that one. I'm going to just use that one all the time. And then again, I'll say this again for like the 18th billionth time. Remember, your law of sines can help you solve for missing angles and sides. Your law of cosines can help you solve for missing angles and missing sides. So use those two tools at your disposal to get whatever information out of your triangle you need to get. 
and then just use your favorite area formula, okay? It's always easier to just remember one than it is to try to remember all of them. And any one of them will work as long as you can find the information that you need to find to plug into your formula, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.